mercy and peace be to you from God our Father and our newborn Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The text for the sermon is going to be from the gospel text that we just heard, but especially the last verse, verse 16. And from his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. So by now, all of the presents have been un unwrapped and all of the boxes emptied and the stocking hangs uh, much limper than it had because it's now empty too. And maybe, uh, just maybe, all of, the, all of the paper and the ribbons and the bows and the boxes have been collected, put away, and cleaned up. Mm, or maybe not yet. So what'd you get for Christmas this year? Get a new sweater? Sweaters are, sweaters are always a good thing to get for Christmas. Just moved here from Maine. It's our first Christmas here, and a sweater was always a good gift for Christmas. Uh, what you get? Uh, maybe one of the, maybe one of the most recent electronic gadgets. I hear that there was an awful lot of them moving through the marketplace into probably stockings and packages under the Christmas tree this year. What did you get for Christmas? And what did your father give you for Christmas this year? Aha, a savior who is Christ the Lord. I'll be darned, he gave me the same gift. The exact same gift that you got, I got. But you know, he gave me that same gift last year too and the year before that, and the year before that, and the year before that. And in fact, now that I think about it, he has given me the exact same gift every Christmas for every year, as far back as I can remember. A savior who is Christ the Lord. Why does he keep giving me the same gift every year, year after year? It is because this is what we need. It's what I need. And sometimes, sometimes I can hardly believe, I can hardly believe that it is my name that is written on that package. To Paul, from your father, a savior, who is Christ the Lord. And he keeps on giving me his son, saying, take it. I mean, really, take him. He keeps putting his son into my hands, saying, take him, take his body, take his blood. It's just what you need. And I'm happy to have him. I mean, I'm really happy to have him. But the truth is, sometimes, uh, the real truth is maybe more than just sometimes, there is so much other stuff going on in my life. And there is just so much stuff going on in my world that, frankly speaking, I hardly notice the gift that my father gave me for Christmas this year. And I put it aside. And it just sits there in some far removed corner of my life. And you know, the, the deeper truth is that sometimes, sometimes it's not just, the, it's not even the stuff that's gone on in my life. It's not even the stuff that's gone on in the world around me. It's the stuff, it's the stuff that's not gone on in my life and that's not gone on in the world around me. And frankly, there's a couple of things that I'd, I'd really, really like to have things that I think are more urgent, more necessary right now for me in my life, in my world, than a savior who is Christ the Lord. Wait a minute, just wait a minute. Did I just say that? Did, I must be nuts. I must be crazy. Did I really just say that although I really, really do appreciate my father's gift to me, the fact is I've got more pressing issues and needs going on in my big, huge, all-absorbing life than a savior who is Christ the Lord? For 
God so loved the world that he gave me, me, his only begotten son, on Christmas. That's nice. It really is nice, but frankly, what I was hoping for was better health, or a better job, or a friend, or a new car, or a new electronic gadget. Well, you fill in whatever blanks you fill in for your life. But it's good, it's really good that I've got Jesus tucked away somewhere in a remote corner of my life. And it's good because he'll help me cope with all of the things that I didn't get for Christmas. The truth is, we really don't have any idea. We don't have any idea how much we got for Christmas this year, do we? From his fullness, we have all received from the fullness of him who fills all in all. We have received. What I really wanted was from this world's emptiness, but my father gave me from his fullness. So how much is that anyway? It's more than I can comprehend, I'll tell you that much. That much I know. But I can comprehend this much. I can't fit his fullness into some remote, distant corner of my life. My life is too small and his fullness is too big. He is the radiance of the glory of God and I am the radiance of sin and death, but of his fullness we have all received. He is the exact imprint of the nature of God, and we are the exact imprint of the nature of Adam and Eve, but of his fullness we have all received. He upholds the universe by the word of his power, and I up, am upheld by the word of approval from my peers. And the balance in my checking account and the stability of my retirement plan, but of his fullness, we have all received. And as though that were not enough, my father says, ah, you're just scratching the surface. There's more. There's always more of his fullness. And so keep unwrapping. In him is hidden all of the wisdom and knowledge of God. And in us is revealed all of the folly and foolishness of man. But of his fullness we have all received. In him the fullness of the Godhead dwells bodily and in us dwells every false god that we worship and that we feed on and that feeds on me like a big fat tick but of his fullness we have all received and my father says you haven't even begun to scratch the surface yet you haven't even begun to taste all that there is to taste just keep unwrapping in him is life and the fullness of his life swallows up the fullness of our death so that in the end, all we're left with is his life. Not something tucked away in the corner of my death, but life which is all in all. Keep unwrapping. In him is light and the fullness of his light shatters the fullness of the darkness that is in me and in you and in the whole dark world. But my father says, let there be light, and it was so, and now it's so with you. Keep unwrapping and unwrapping and unwrapping because there's no end, there is no bottom to the breadth and the length and the height and the depth of his fullness. So what you get for Christmas this year? What did your father give you? And what have you done with it? What have you done with this gift of a savior who is Christ the Lord that he has given you year after year after year? Listen, I, I know that it's incomprehensible. It's too big for our little brains to get around. And I know that eventually, eventually, 
we will be fully, we will know fully even as we have been fully known all along. And eventually, we'll comprehend what is incomprehensible right now. But every once in a while, every once in a while and the older I get, the more I think about these things. How much better would it have been? How much better would it have been all along if I had only comprehended the incomprehensible and known just a little more the unknowable? How much wiser and smarter I would have been? How much more love I would have known? How much more love I would have given? How much more peace I might have had? How much less stress and disappointment and hurt and how much less mad and harassed I would have been. But I was busy. Oh, yes, I was busy. How are you doing? Oh, I've been busy. I was busy with everything going on in my big, huge, all-absorbing, shrinking, shriveling, dying life. And my father says to me, keep unwrapping. For from his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. Grace is that undeserved kindness and mercy that blots out, that blots out all of my should haves and could haves and might have beens and all with the fullness of him who fills all in all. It's grace upon grace. Grace that has no bottom, no end, no height, no limits to it. It's always breaking over your head like the waves at the seashore, one after another, after another, until the sea is no more. Grace is exactly what we need. And it is exactly what we got for Christmas. It's the fullness of the love of God for you, all wrapped in the fullness of human flesh and blood, all wrapped up in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. As the Father loves the Son, so from his fullness we have all received. As the Son loves the Father, so from his fullness we have all received. It's love upon love, mercy upon mercy, forgiveness upon forgiveness, life upon life, glory upon glory. And it's the same gift that he gave us last year and the year before that and before that. And now guess what? This Christmas, he's given it to us again because it is exactly what we need. And this year, this year I say the same thing that I say every year. Father, I thank you for your precious gift of a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And I promise, I promise that I will do better with it this year than I did last year. To which my father says, Child, I don't know what you mean. All I have ever seen in you is the fullness of my beloved son and the fullness of his love in you. So hopefully at some point in our life, hopefully, we just begin to realize that everything that is going on in my big all-absorbing life and everything that is going on in the world all around me is not everything that's going on. A Savior who has been born, who is Christ the Lord, and in him the fullness of the glory of God took the emptiness of all that is going on in my life and around me and swallowed it. And on the cross, I see where my big, huge, all-absorbing life was headed. In Jesus, I see the love of God for me and my tiny, pathetic, empty life. The baby born of Mary in the little town of Bethlehem is our life. 
and of his fullness. We have all received, even though we cannot begin to imagine, let alone experience it, but we will. We will. And in the meantime, we just keep unwrapping.